This is Andy Poirot of Boxing News. I'm joined by Matt McLean here in London at the Boati Aziz press conference. Well, somewhat of a press conference. Back to the gloves are off live. But Matt, firstly, how are you? I'm good, yeah, all good. Looking forward to this uh, bill on Saturday. Um, obviously, with it being delayed, it kind of makes you even more excited for it now. That's something I was going to ask you about. Obviously, the delay in between the fights, the somewhat tension since, obviously, I think Josh has question to say the least the legitimacy of Dan's injury and pull out from the original day what have you made of somewhat of the back and forth sir? Uh, I, I mean I haven't overly you know followed it too much because it's it is what it is isn't it but I just I think it's look it's naturally it's natural that it's going to come about they're both very sort of polite and uh, respectful initially but when something like this happens there's going to be frustration uh, blame as well I guess and um, naturally, things get said, and then people react to what gets said. So yeah, it's kind of, you know, the, the, the nice, the nice guys. Things probably fell away a little bit, and I think I expect a bit more needle now. What do you think is going to be the key for both men on Saturday night? Um, I think I think Dan Aziz has got to really start fast. He's got to try and jump on Josh, uh, and, and and try and. You know, not let him settle. He's got to keep it on him, stick it on him, keep it on him, and you know, stay close. Don't don't really let uh, Josh get room to, to put his combinations together. You know, he's got to treat, I think stay up close and really force a pace. And because I don't think he can beat Joshua Boatsi at long range. I think he's really got to kind of not go gung ho and be reckless, but he's got to be quite forceful. He's got to really assert himself and um, and take the fight to to Josh. But in doing that, I think he also, there's a big risk or a big chance that he'll bring the best out in Joshua Boatze as well. But it, it's his only chance. I don't think he can stand back and try and box with Joshua. You know what I mean? He's got to, it, with, with, uh, sorry, Dan has got to take the fight to Boatze. Picking this back up, Matt, um, with Joshua Boatze, obviously you'd have covered him when he was at Matchroom Boxing and when you guys were covering the shows there. And there's been somewhat of that wait for that I don't necessarily think breakout performance might be the right word, but a performance which really makes you take note. Do you feel like we will see that in Josh's case on Saturday night? I, I think so, and I think I think because I think, well, he needs to because he's he's been forgotten about really, and he, uh, you know, he signed with Sky, with Boxer. He, you know, had the day before Boxer in Birmingham, and really just. He just stayed in first gear. Now, he, he won every second of every round. So, you know, you couldn't really fault him or say he was a bad performer, but he didn't like, you, from a from a fan's point of view, and from a pundit's point of view, working for Sky on the, the, the commentary, of the team, I was thinking to myself, come on then, put your foot on the gas, go through the gears, show, you, show, show, show us how good you are, you know, show the fans, the viewers, how good you are. But he just seemed happy and content to stay in first gear, um, which, you know, maybe he was boxing to instructions because he never. I didn't really hear any urgency from the corner, and maybe they were happy with that, and they're working towards. You know, maybe he wanted to see things in the fight, and he showed him that. But from from a from a, a viewer's point of view, it was a uh, under underwhelming. You know, it was underwhelming. He just he he, he stayed in first gear. He, he could. I felt like he could have done a lot more. Is there somewhat of an un, maybe an unknown sense of pressure to Josh in the sense that? You've got Ben Whitaker on the card, for example. So the next star of the light heavyweight division is coming through. And the light heavyweight division domestically itself is stacked with so many great fighters. Anthony Yard fights being mentioned. Callum Smith's out there as well. It's really a case for him now. He needs to try and say, this is why I'm the number one, at least domestically. Yeah, and he, well, he's, been, he's been very inactive as well, you know. And, and he's, the last couple of performances haven't really got people excited. You know, when he, but when he turned pro... He put in some big performances. He was, you know, he looked brilliant. He was very exciting, and people were very excited about him. Um, but you know, out of sight, out of mind, inactivity, not boxing, then a few lackluster performances when he has boxed, and you, you become forgotten, you know. And, and especially in a division which is red hot, and other people are putting in big performances and climbing the ladder, it, it, he's kind of fell to the side a little bit. You know, that said, you're as good as your last fight, and if he if he puts on a exhilarating performance on Saturday night and really, you know, excites everyone, then all of a sudden you're back, he's back up there. So, and, and you know, it, it is, it's an eliminator for a world title. Uh, I think 
I do believe he is world class. Um, but again, I think he has to show that on Saturday night. You know, Dan Aziz has had a great sort of 18 months, two years. He's really put himself out there. He's really climbed the ladder profile-wise, getting titles, he's putting some big performances. And uh, I think a lot of people will be rooting for him. But uh, if Joshua Boatsi performs as we know he can, he should be too good for Dan Aziz. Moving forwards and away from the main event, a few other fights to get your thoughts on. Ben Whitaker returns, as we mentioned. A uh, big favourite, not a fight which anybody would be expecting troubles from. How key is it that he somewhat just comes through this as quickly as possible Then he looks towards an active and important 2024 for himself? Yeah, active is the key word, isn't it? You know, he's a young fighter, still building his uh, profile, still developing as a fighter. So it, it's, it's key that he's, you know, he, he wins, obviously he's got to win. Hopefully comes through unscathed injury-wise and then gets back out there ASAP and, like you say, starts chasing those, uh, you know, the world titles. I mean, he's not, uh, he's not ready for that, but, you know, you want to start chasing them now and, 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 and you know, fighting the opponents that are going to get you ready for it. Just the final one on this card, Adam Azim and Enoch Paulson. Obviously, we saw Adam Azim stop uh, Frank Petitjan. You're not about Adam Azim then? No, no. Who's going to hurt them? Oh, Ben Whitaker, sorry, Ben. I thought you were about Adam Azim. Um, uh, because he's on the card. Yeah. Well, look, Ben Whitaker as well. You know, Ben Whitaker's got to be active because he's been so inactive. I mean, that Adam, Adam's been fairly busy, but, like, you know, again, young fighters. You want to see them out there. They're improving, aren't they? And, you know, look, Adam Azim's got time on his side. You know, Ben Whitaker really hasn't. You know, he's pushing on now. The years are flying by and he's he's been inactive. So, and I know some of it hasn't been his fault. He's been injured and that, but, and he has looked good when he has fought. But yeah, he needs to kind of, I'm not, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe he calls out the loser of the main event on Saturday night. That'd be, that'd be a statement if he was to call out the, whoever loses on Saturday night. Because I think whoever wins is going to push on and look for a world title shot. But whoever was to lose that fight, you know, Ben Whitaker could be, should be looking to call them out, maybe. And then Adam Aziz, that's who I was on about. As in, like, he's had a brilliant year. He's been active. He's been great performances. And, you know, he got the rounds in in the last few fights, which I think is, you know, fundamental for him in terms of his development. But, yeah, he's, he's, he's had a great year last year. And I think this year will be even better again. Potential Tank Davis fight for Adam? <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. What did you make of those rumours that he supported that Tank's considering oh. having his next bout here in the UK? And if there's anyone you could think, say, between Super Feather to Light, who do you think would be ready for that type of fight? Joe Cordina. That was the name that I recommend. I got laughed off when I said that. Yeah. Well, why not? He's, you know, world champion. Uh, brilliant amateur himself, you know what I mean? Probably naturally bigger, I would say, than... Tank Davis is in his. Tank Davis has come up the weights, hasn't he? So I, I can't think of anyone else that would really. You, you, you asked me who over here. I would say the first name that comes to my mind is Joe Cordina. Uh, Matt, just moving forwards, getting forwards on a few other topics. So Anthony Yard in the week. Anthony Yard was saying that he'd be open to a fight with Chris Billum Smith up at Cruiseway. One that would interest you on earth to be looking at a potential Yard versus a winner of Saturday night. But aside from that, Yard Billum Smith do anything for you? Yeah. Definitely, why not? You know, he could fight a yard, didn't he? And, uh, you know, Billum Smith, good fighter too, obviously. Um, but it'd be a good clash of styles. You know, what, what, yard's a bit more awkward, isn't he, with that side on, shoulder roll sort of style that he has, where Billum Smith's a lot more sort of textbook, what you see is what you get. Um, but you, definitely. Uh, again, moving forward, your colleague and friend, Johnny Nelson, um, said a few rumours that things haven't been maybe necessarily going as well for Tyson Fury in camp, a few issues in sparring. What do you make of any of that? I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything. Um, rumours are rumours, aren't they? You, you know, you hear a lot of BS, don't you, floating around the rumour mill. Um, look, I thought T Tyson, he was poor against Ngannou, but at the same time, I think he completely overlooked him. I, you know, my, my feeling was he just thought he had to go in and blast him out. Um, and obviously that didn't happen. Then all of a sudden it became, sorry, it became a, it became a tricky fight for him. Tricky fight. But uh, I don't think, look, I think we'll, we'll see a completely different Tyson Fury uh, against Alexander Rusik. I, I don't think, you know, we'll, we'll see the best Tyson Fury of what's left now you know he but he, you know there is miles on the clock for him too so i don't know is he as good as the tyson fury that beat Deontay wilder those two times you know we don't know um you know usik as well tricky fighter that oh, what a fight that is 
do you think comes out of top? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think like, Fury's. I think Fury will be the favorite. Fury will be the favorite, and um, and I think he should be the favorite. But I w wouldn't shock me if Usyk won that fight. Do you see the Do you see sorry Alexander Usyk as the toughest test of Fury's career so far? Yeah, I mean, styles make fights, and, and, and different fighters bring different problems. Look, down to Wilder was uh, uh, brought the power, didn't he? And, and he was that you had to be Fury to be careful, and uh, but he didn't. Down to Wilder wouldn't have had anywhere near the boxing skills, or, or you know, or, or ring IQ or any of that stuff that what Alexander Usyk's got. You know, he's quite. He, he weren't the best boxer, but he but he did but he did carry that power, so. That that was the that was the prop though that, that was the threat he brought to the table where Alexander Rusic brings a completely different set of problems uh, for Tyson Fury to work out. Uh, very mobile, very tricky, very fit, very clever. You know, Southpaw as well. So I don't know. It's a it's a, it's a completely different uh, a completely different assignment for Fury. Uh, and at this stage in his career, you know, he's, he's um, you know he's there's miles on the clock now, isn't there? Move forwards again, Matt, um, Joshua and Garnu a few weeks later. What do you expect to see from that? More of a routine performance for AJ? Um, look, I thought AJ looked really sharp in his last fight. Um, look, even before the stoppage, he, 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 you know, first round he looked sharp straight away. Um, so that, that was good to see. Now, and Garnu, like I say, I thought Fury overlooked him, so maybe that flattered... And Garner a little bit, but nonetheless, he's a lump. He can bang. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he was pretty good with his distance. He didn't fall in. He, he didn't, you know, let Fury grab a hold of him. He was good on the inside of getting his hands free. Um, obviously, got a solid chin. So, you know, it's still, it's still not an easy fight. The guy's a world class fighter. Might not be a world class experienced boxer yet. But on his one fight that he did have against the best fighter in the world, he did well. So, I don't know. I, I, look, I think you, you, again, you've got to say you've got to pick Fury. Uh, you've got to pick AJ. And I would expect AJ to win and win and win well. But, you know, you, I, I, you can't overlook that guy. Thank God. One which has divided opinion on that undercard, sticking with heavyweights, so is Joseph Parker and Zhang Gillet. Who do you edge towards in that fight, Matt? Well, well Parker was brilliant against Wilder. Um, what, but I also thought Wilder was very poor. You know, he'd had one round in two years or something. His time and his distance, he looked terrible. Park, and Parker looked good. So it was, it was both, you know. Um, Zhang, you know, he, he's looked brilliant in his last couple against Joyce. Um, and I thought he was brilliant against Hergovic as well. So that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good fight. That's a really good fight, that is. Who do you edge towards? I don't know. I don't know. So I think it's hard to pick because I would have said Zhang, but, 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 but you know, Parker did impress me in his last fight, uh, albeit I didn't, think, I didn't think Wilder was sharp. He looked really rusty, but that, can't, that didn't take anything away from how good Joseph Parker boxed. Don't know. Just a final one from me, Matt. A uh, fight which was just announced a couple of days ago. Keith Furman and Tim Zhu. Uh, how do you expect to see that one play out? I think Tim Zhu will beat him. I think, I think Thurman's shut. You know, he's like, how many fights has he had in the last five years? Hardly any, do you know what I mean? I don't, does he even want to box anymore? Probably not. It's just the, the money's good, the payday. You, you know, you, you, we said it there about Wilder one round in two years. You can't, you can't be that inactive and expect to perform to anywhere near your, your, the best of your ability. So, you know, really, we're seeing Keith Thurman. Are we going to... What Keith Thurman are we going to see? You know, not, not the one from years ago that was like top of the welterweight division. It's not going to be that Keith Thurman. Obviously, he's up at 154 pounds now as well against Tim Sue, who's young, fresh, hungry. No, I think Sue will win that. Matt, it's a pleasure to catch up with you as always. Enjoy the rest of the week. Obviously, enjoy fight night, and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers.